Emacs gets a bad rap for slow startup times, and there's some truth to that, especially if you have a large .emacs file or you load a lot of packages. If you're used to working in a terminal and editing from the command line, this could get a bit tedious over time. Speaking of tedious, let's get rid of this startup screen, and I never want to see it again. So you open a file, edit it, save it, and then quit Emacs. And the next time you open a file in Emacs, you've got to go through the same startup all over again. Fortunately, there's a solution for this, and it's Emacs Client, which is installed with Emacs by default. Now, before running Emacs Client, I already have an open Emacs window from the last episode. So I'll switch back to my terminal and edit the file I want with Emacs Client, which will then open it in my existing Emacs session. Except that Emacs Client can't find the server. Here, Emacs Client tells us how to start the server, but I'd like it to start automatically every time. So while we're already in Customize, let's search for Server and we'll use server mode and set that to on and save it for future sessions. Now let's try again. The terminal gives us a message that it's waiting for Emacs and if we switch back to the Emacs session it's now loaded the file that we typed on the command line and it's giving us a message that when we're done with this buffer press control X pound or hash so let's try that now, control X, pound, and the buffer disappears. And if we switch back to the terminal, Emacs client is now finished. Let's try again with a file I can actually make some changes to. We'll just use a temporary file. And Emacs has loaded it and it's an empty buffer because the file doesn't exist. So let's type some text and then control X, pound asks if we want to save the file. I'm going to press Control G and instead just press Control X, Control S to save the file like normal. And then I'll kill the buffer with Control X, K. And Emacs is telling us that this buffer still has clients. It's fine to go ahead and say yes here. And this is how you would finish with that buffer if you forgot the key binding to get rid of it. To test that the file was actually written out, let's just cat it to the terminal. And there it is. Now, we could leave it at that and wrap up the episode, but what if you wanted to run a terminal from within Emacs? That's right, Emacs contains a terminal emulator that you can start with MetaX term. Just choose the shell that you want to run inside of it, and you have a terminal. You can see at the beginning of the line here that something has gone a little bit wrong with our prompt. And if I look to see what my prompt is in my bash rc file, you can guess that the terminal emulator built into Emacs isn't handling these escape sequences correctly. Additionally, if you compare the colors, the colors aren't exactly the same. What's probably happening here is that Emacs is emulating an old 16 color terminal. I'm not going to bother trying to make it any prettier because it'll get the job done for now. One of the nice things about running a terminal inside of Emacs is that you can switch between it and other buffers just as easily as any other buffer. Except when I try to press Control X B, the Control X is being sent in to the terminal. There's a built-in workaround in Terminal for this. Instead of Control X whatever, use Control C whatever. So we'll use Control C B, and it will allow us to switch to a different buffer. And well, if a terminal is just another buffer, we should be able to run multiple terminals. 
but it turns out that that's not supported. Now, since the terminal emulator really is a full terminal, to get multiple shells, we could use a terminal multiplexer like Tmux. And sure enough, it works. Here, I'll create a new window, switch back to the first, run an LS in the first, look up the man page for man in the second, and it just works. In fact, there's nothing stopping us from starting another Emacs inside of the Tmux session, inside of the terminal, inside of Emacs. And we can do that by adding dash NW for no window. And this works anywhere that you run Emacs, not just inside of another Emacs. Now, although this inner Emacs looks like the outer Emacs, that's mostly a coincidence that the terminal is using the same foreground and background color and the same font. But the inner Emacs is missing a scroll bar. The colors aren't the same. These are the basic 16 colors. And we have a message that this inner Emacs is unable to start the Emacs server. To prove to you, though, that it's working like a regular Emacs session, I'm going to use metax term to start a terminal inside of the embedded Emacs, inside of Tmux, inside of terminal, inside of Emacs. You get the idea. And if we want to go farther and start another multiplexer, well, Tmux is telling us that this is probably not a good idea. So you can play with this and see how deeply nested you can go if you want, but I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these. So let's exit the inner terminal, close that buffer, let's exit the inner Emacs. But it hasn't exited here. The control X went to the inner Emacs and the control C went to the outer Emacs. And that's because of what we saw earlier where trying to switch buffers with control X B didn't work. The control X went into the terminal. And the terminal provides a workaround where control C does the same function. But to do that, it has to trap the control C instead of sending it in. To send the control C in anyway, we just type another control C and it's sent to what's running inside the terminal. So let's leave the Tmux session and exit this terminal. Well, that was fun, but as you can imagine, it gets a little bit confusing. And so maybe what you want is really multiple terminals. Fortunately, there's a package for that. Let's list packages and look for multi-term. We'll install this. And now, instead of using MX term, we'll use MX multi-term. So we'll start one terminal, we'll start multi-term to start another terminal, and now we can switch between them. Open a man page in this one. This one is still back at the prompt. So these are interesting, but there's still another way of doing things. Instead of using a terminal emulator, what about using a shell? We can start one with MX shell. Now, I haven't found the default shell to be all that useful. So instead, I'm going to start eShell, which is a shell written in Emacs Lisp. We can already see that the prompt looks cleaner. And that's because it's being handled by Emacs itself. It's not reading the PS1 variable. Now with it, we can do some interesting things. Let's look at rcconf. And notice that we are now in a less buffer. The buffers mode is terminal, but we also still have the shell open. So we can open up uh, another file in another buffer and switch between. And when we're done, press Q like normal to quit less. Another useful feature is using a built-in command find file like you'd use Emacs client. And so find file on test gives us this I exist message we typed in earlier. And if we make changes here and kill that buffer, they went to the file system. And if you want to get into some really interesting functionality, you can also use Emacs Lisp directly in the shell. 
but that's beyond the scope of this episode. Each of these methods of working with the command line have their disadvantages. For example, eShell doesn't really handle programs that really need a terminal too well. The SL command, or Steam Locomotive, which is designed to troll you if you mistype ls, doesn't really seem to do anything inside of eShell. My personal preference is to just stick with using the shell from a dedicated terminal emulator with a multiplexer like Tmux. I'm sure you'll find the setup that works best for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.